Hi, Technobeer here. Today we're going to be looking at Metamorph. Metamorph is my suite of VCV rack modules that it brings your eigenharps into VCV rack. This video is going to go through how to build patches with it and also look at each individual module and how you can use them. If you'd like to get involved in the early access program, which is being released today, then look for the link in the description of this video. If you want to keep up to date, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And if you'd like to support me in my developments, then you can also find a Ko-fi link in the description of this video. Okay, let's get started. So what we're going to do is we're going to first of all build up a quick demonstration patch just to show the thing making a sound. Now, when you have joined the early access, what you're going to be given is a plugin file, which you simply drag into your VCV rack folder and then just start VCV rack. Now, you don't need any extra software. Metamorph does everything. So you don't need EigenD installed or anything like that. You simply just drop this in and off your way to go. Okay, so the first thing we do is we obviously need to talk to the EigenHarp and you can see these are the Metamorph modules, which we're going to go through in more detail. But first of all, let's just get going. So here's the EigenHarp module, which is obviously connected to the EigenHarp. If we now press a button on our Pico that I'm using for demonstration, we can see in the active voices, some lights turning on. So that shows it's working. So now let's just have a quick um, voice from VCV Rack. I'm only going to use basic modules from VCV Rack, so you don't have to have anything else installed. We'll use a wavetable oscillator and we'll put that into say a filter and then we will take that into a VCA and um, we we'll use that as a starting point. So this is a very basic voice. What we want to do on the Eigenhart module is we first of all will say that we need want to connect the Z axis to the VCA to control the volume. Oh, we also need to do it to the right input. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to go and give a volt per octave into the oscillator. Now we need to do that using a scalar, which converts this key output into a, an actual volt per octave. So we take the key output here. Now the general principle here is that you want to actually only connect the red ones like key to the corresponding input. These are not general voltages, these are specific to this uh, metamorph system. Okay, and the scalar also will light some lights on. So if we bring on the lights, we can see that by default the octaves are done. And by default, the scalar is working in chromatic mode. And you can see importantly, we get a volt per octave output here, which we can then connect to our VCO. Now this is actually polyphonic. By default here, it's 16 voices. So we've got our output stage here, which is simply just a re reverb and a mixer. And so what I want to do first, before I take this into the mixer, is I'm gonna convert this actually into a monophonic symbol. So we can use a sum module to do that. This will help reduce uh, CPU load. And then we take that into the mixer here. Okay, so now we can see that this is actually, if you look at the voltage here, just a simple signal. And for now. Okay, not very exciting, but we have a sound. We can now take this a little bit further. We can take, for example, the Y axis. And if we put this into the wavetable position and move the wavetable a bit now. Oh, let's open up the filter a bit. We can see we've got... So very quickly, we've got a very expressive um, interaction. So we could basically see what we've got here. Um, we could also take the pitch bend here, for example, from the X key. This will give us per note pitch bend. And we've also got, for example, access to the strip here. Now we can go into the global input. Okay, so that's the basics of what we're going to be doing. So let's now have a little bit more of a, 
a look into what we've actually done here so we can start thinking a little bit more about the possibilities. So the first thing we can actually see if we look at this Eigenheart module is this device filter. Now this is only important if you're using multiple Eigenharps. In its default position, it will connect to all of the Eigenharps connected to your computer and then just sum all of the outputs from here. Um, but if you wish to actually make it so that you uh, have multiple Eigenharps in one patch, then you can say, okay, I only want this to connect to TAUs or the Pico or the first Pico, second Pico. Okay, now if we come down, we can see that this, as I said, just is a representation of the voices that are currently working on the um, Eigenharp. Uh, we then get strip outputs, pedal outputs, and the breath outputs here. Um, now, obviously, the Pico only has one strip and has no pedals and has breath. So you can see already that this actually represents all Eigenharps, regardless of their abilities. The first set of outputs here represent the function key outputs, which is why there's only a gate output and no expressive output. So these are the round buttons on the Pico. These are present on the tau on the Pico, but don't exist on the um, alpha. The middle one then represents the main surface output. So on the Pico, that's basically all the expressive outputs. And then the final one here is the percussive keys, which don't exist on the Pico, but are present on the Tau and the Alpha. Importantly here, we have also a polyphony count against each of these. So this says how many voices each of these uh, sections has available to them. Now, Polyphony is very important within VCV Rack because if you, for example, have here 16 note polyphony, this means effectively all of these modules here are 16 uh, forms of them. So basically, if I use this as eight polyphony, then we are going to use eight times less processing power in this voice. So once we start getting complex patches, we want to actually think about how we uh, allocate polyphony. Uh, traditionally, I would tend to only use one voice, for example, on these key outputs, uh, these function key outputs, because I'm tending to only press one at a time. Um, and uh, similarly, you might want to restrict the percussive keys. But we're going to see also that there are more options to uh, control the polyphony as we move on to some of the other modules. From there, we take, so each of these outputs, if we just quickly look at them, so the key output in each case represents the kind of row column output. You won't ever see any voltages on these really, uh, but they do exist, um, but that's why they're in red. The X represents the uh, vertical axis of the uh, Eigenharp, the Y represents the side by side, your axis, typically used for timber, and the Z is the pressure. Another very important part of the outputs is the key group output. This tells other modules in Metamorph how large this key group is. Now, um, obviously that makes a difference when we're talking about different eigenhearts, but also when we start getting into splits and layers, that becomes very important. So basically the deal is you always want to connect key to keys, key groups to key groups. And similarly, we have lights, which again, you won't see any voltage on, but this actually is how we get the um, light stream coming back to the eigenharps. And again, it's important to connect the outputs to the inputs here. Note, you can't, do any CV manipulation on key, key group, and light, these ones in reds. You always just connect one to the other. Okay. Now if we move down, we can move to the scalar module. The first most important part is these X row columns and offsets. So X row represents every time you go down a row, how many degrees in the scale will it increase or how many notes in some 
Whereas X column represents every time you go across a column, how many notes do you go up or degrees do you go up? So we can see this one. So every time we go down the row, it increases in one. And every time we move from column, we go up four, so a minor third. And we can see we've currently got an offset of zero, so it's starting from zero. And this basically is semitones, so essentially represents um, uh, zero is C, one is C sharp, and two is D. Okay, now I've been using the words notes and degrees interchangeable, that's kind of incorrect. This scalar is um, possible to implement different scales. If we right click on here, we can see that we have a scaled list. There is a scales directory in which we can put Scala files. So this means that we can move into something like a minor scale here. Oh, let's, <laughs> let's remove the note. <laughs> Um, but we can also do full microtonal uh, work as well within this. And again, this is why these actually represent not notes so much as degrees of the scale. Finally, we have some very simple lighting possibilities here. Basically, we can say the degree of the scale and what color. So basically here we can see that we've got zero, it's got green, so the root. If we put this to say four and red, uh, some red, sorry, I put this to red, we can suddenly see we get extra lights here, or we can turn these off again. So that's how we use the scalar. Okay, so this, we had simple scale lighting there. What if you wanted something that was a little bit more complex? Well, we can actually use a different module for that, which is the Illuminator. The Illuminator is actually a very simple module. Basically what happens is we take the key input, we take the key group input here, and instead of using the lights from uh, the scalar, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the lights from the Illuminator. And the Illuminator basically has patterns and we can basically just do our own patterns. So you can define any kind of lighting you want using the Illuminator. Let's go back. So now we've got a simple voice. Now what we want to do is to be able to switch between two different types of voices with two different sounds. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to use our switch module. The switch module allows you to switch between four different um, outputs using the selector up here. So rather than go directly to the voice, what we're gonna do is we're gonna now come via this module. So we take these, take the key group, take the key, take X as well, take Y up to here. And now what we're going to do, oh, and don't forget Z. And we're gonna take Z down here. And connect the lights, connect the key group, and connect the key. Connect Y to the position. And you can see now we're basically back into the same position, but we're now coming via this switch module. So now what we can do though is duplicate this voice. Now obviously this voice in practice would be very different, uh, but for example what we'll do here is we'll move this to uh, the chromatic scale and we connect this one now in exactly the same as we do, but we're going to connect it to this one's. The second output. Uh, position Y. And we're going to... Um, I did that to the wrong one, didn't I? Okay, in traditional VCV, right, the <laughs> modular, it all gets very messy, but uh, what have we got? Uh, we haven't connected any of these. Um, okay, connect this to here. Connect the low path output to the... That needs to go... Now to the input, and this one comes to the output. Okay. 
all traditional stuff. Now, we can see that we're actually connected still to the first one. If we look at the VCA module here, here we can see where the output is. But now if we use, uh, we just create some voltage here. If I now move this and I put this to one volt, we can now see we're connected to the other one, which I haven't obviously connected up because we've not got any sound. Oh, I've forgotten to get the sound down here. Okay, here, yeah. Oh, and I've forgotten to connect the volt per octave, which is why we've not got any, oh, there we are. And we can see that actually, if we connect this instead to zero volts here, we've gone back to the first voice. So that's the principle of switching, very straightforward. Um, now coming back to polyphony here, you will notice that I can actually change the polyphony of each of these. So I've actually gone down here from, oh well in this case we've got, six, if I put this up to 16 voices again, we can see we've got 16 voices here, but the outputs here should be Oh, sorry, wrong one. This, these are always one voice. Here we've got eight outputs. So this already gives us way. So for example, if we've got more complex voices in a particular patch, um, then we might want to restrict the polyphony down here so that we can keep control of the uh, CPU load. Okay, well, this was just switching a voltage. That's not particularly useful. What if I want to be able to control this from the Eigenharp itself? Well, we can use another module, and this one is called the function modules. Now there's two different variants of it. This function module here allows you to put function keys on very specific rows and columns. Um, whereas this function module over here just numbers uh, the functions from one to 12 based uh, sequentially, uh, going first across the rows and then across the columns. So this one's a little bit simpler to use, so let's use this one. Now what we can do on the um, on the Pico is we have function keys, so we can simply connect our key inputs here, and we can use this gate input, and we can use the key group input as we do normally, and again we can attach the lights here, um, and then what's going to happen is we're going to get um, some voltage out of each of these when it becomes true. Now one thing about the gate output here, uh, or rather the gate input here, this works off of uh, 1.5 volts. So you can use the Z-axis as well if you wish. Um, obviously we don't have uh, expressive inputs on the uh, function keys of, of the round buttons, but uh, you can use these for example on the alpha. Um, now as soon as we actually connect a light here to something, we like the selector, you can see now on the Pico that we now have a green light on this. And now what's going to happen is it will generate one or zero depending upon whether or not initially just on gate. Now um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to switch this over to be a different type of function which is a toggle. So now what happens is if we toggle so we're on this one, and if we press on this one, it's not working. Ah! <laughs> okay, the reason this is not working is this is actually generating 10 volts. Uh, I've forgotten about that. What we actually want to do here is, we'll, we'll do this uh, in a more interesting way. Okay, so I had to think that through a little bit more. So what we need to do with the switch is we need to give it one, uh, zero, one, two, or three volts to select these. So we're actually going to use a more generic method for selecting these rather than just switching them directly. Um, and so the way I'm going to do that, or the way I have done this, is we've actually used the function module in so-called trig mode. So this basically means it's going to produce a trigger. And what we're going to do here is we're using a sequential switch to move between the different uh, inputs here. One of which outputs zero volts, the next one outputs one volt. 
and we use that to select. So now, when I press the button here, we basically will move through the sequential switch and so the voices. And we can see that the lights are changing. So here and here. Now, using this mechanism, you can build up pretty elaborate voices, so we can have as many voices basically as we want. Um, I've used a sequential switch, so we've got a button here, but you can come up with other mechanisms. As I say, these can, do, can generate uh, trigs, gates, or even toggles. Okay, so what if rather than switch between the modules, we want to have two different voices present on the keyboard, so we want to split the keyboard. Okay, let's do that. So for simplicity, because um, this patch is getting complex, we're gonna actually get rid of the switch um, and we're gonna replace this actually with instead a row splitter. Uh, and we'll get rid of these modules for the time being as well, but leave this up here. Okay, now there are actually a but there are actually two different types of splitters in the same way as the two different types of function. This splitter here is uh, more advanced. This allows you to basically create two splits, but they have very specific start points and end and then sizes. So you can get uh, pretty creative with how you lay out a surface. Whereas the row splitter is the more general purpose, which is basically we can create four different splits, up to four different splits, and we just say how many rows there are on there. So what I'm gonna do here, for example, is just have four rows in the first one, and then we can use five rows here, uh, what, four rows in fact, and uh, we'll have one row here. Now if any of these uh, polyphonies or row are zeros, then it's just ignored, but we'll, again, we'll give, it, uh, we'll give it some voices, Oh, it doesn't matter really for this demonstration. And again, exactly the same as before. We just connect the lights to the lights, the key groups, etc. And again, this polyphony is very important here because now we're using these uh, all at the same time. So basically, it's very quick to be able to start using a lot of CPU load in... Um, uh, VCV rack, and this is a way to control it. Again, we're gonna do exactly the same thing here as we did previously. We're gonna take the lights, um, take the lights from here, the key group we take down to here, Z we take to our VCA, Y we take to the position, X we're not gonna bother with, and here. And similarly for the other layer, we're going to go the other way, so we're gonna take the key key group, lights, Z. Now, just to point out, obviously you can use multiple of any of these objects. So you could have multiple splits, you could have multiple, you could have switches and splits. The, the combinations are immense. Um, and now we need to connect this back to the mixer. And you can actually see down here that the sum is actually telling us we've got the four voices on one and the six on here. So now, and, and for some reason, this, uh, this light's not here, but we should have to find out why. I'm not quite sure why the light's not on there, but that's, uh, have I connected the key group? It... Nope, not sure why the light's not playing. Anyway. Um, so this enables us to do rows and splits. Now you will see that on, and this is an advanced function here, that on things like the row of the splitters here and the switches, you'll see also this disable function. This is actually an advanced feature. What this allows is you to disable this module. So as such, you could do your own switching based off of say the functions and then using and and or logic. Um, but the switch obviously makes this much easier, so I would advise using that. Um, and that's it, that's all of the modules. Um,
The icon heart modules we saw basically enables you to get all of the inputs. Uh, the scalar module allows you to convert uh, the keys using a row column uh, scheme into actually a vault per octave. Uh, the function modules allow you to generate gates, triggers, and toggles um, from keys, uh, enabling you to switch functions up either using the switch or disable functions, or, or you can implement things like uh, octave switching and that kind of stuff. We then have um, the switch, which enables you to switch between these different layers, and the splitters, which enable you to have kind of layers. Um, and again, there's more complex ones or simpler ones. Now, this is a very simple example, uh, partly because I'm using a Pico because it's easy to film, uh, but also uh, just to keep the complexity. Obviously, the main important parts here, we're just using the factory modules. There are lots of third party modules that you can use um, that can simplify some of these processes, like things like counters and things. Um, similarly, also, uh, you could build up pretty much the um, the whole kind of like eigen D factory presets because basically that is a combination of uh, splitting the key groups, switching between different key groups to, to get the different voices um, and using function keys to do that. So this is basically aimed to do that. Now the advantage of using VCV rack is it's pretty much the only way to get out these raw these raw voltages. This is this is all being done at uh, audio rate, um, and it's also being done at um, the highest precision. I mean, VCV rack is using I think thirty two bits, but that means we're getting the full two K um, uh, frequency updates from the Eigen harps, and we're getting the full kind of eleven bit um, precision as well. And it, seeing these voltages is actually makes it very easy to see what's going on when you're doing it. Oh yeah, so a couple of things that I didn't kind of note. Um, these axes are uh, bipolar, so they go minus volt, 10 volts to 10 volts. Um, uh, the pressure obviously is unipolar, it goes from zero to 10 volts. Um, what else can I show you? Uh, we can obviously do things like as well, use a scope so we can actually see what's going on here, uh, quite simply. For example, if we look at this. Now, one thing I will say, um, in certain scenarios, you may well want to use um, uh, slew limiters um, because uh, we are going Although we're doing this at two kilohertz, obviously if you start mixing uh, signals into um, uh, into audio signals directly, you might want to slew them. Um, and also, uh, yeah, one quite uh, no one small input on the scalar. This x, uh, this note input, which is traditionally comes into x. Uh, this is using uh, an exponential scale. So it obviously, so basically uh, it's less sensitive in the middle and uh, more extreme as you go out. Um, just to round off, uh, so basically lots of ways to use this. Uh, really the point of the early access is to actually now get the community involved. Um, we can actually start building up uh, presets. I've done three different presets, which... Um, show it on the Pico, Alpha, and Tau. Um, but really what we want to do is to start going through these, finding any quirks that are present, and also find uh, out whether or not there are any usability enhancements that we can do to extend it. Um, and then of course, what we can do is uh, start creating new modules later. Uh, Alongside this release, I'm also going to be re releasing documentation on uh, the developer API. What that means is basically um, other developers can develop Metamorph uh, compatible modules um, without actually seeing the source code at all that was within Metamorph. Um, and to do that, what they need to know is something about how these key, key groups and lights are encoded and generally this form. Um, so I'm going to be making that information available to them. And that's really it. Um, I hope you enjoy it. 
and uh, yeah, watch this space. Remember, uh, subscribe to this channel if you want updates on this. Uh, look in the description of this video for how to get involved in the early access. And yeah, if you want to um, support me in developing this kind of thing and other open source projects, then have a look at the Ko-fi link in the video description as well. Thanks for your time. Until next time.